Hello! In today's RKO Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. Headline number one comes from Northwest Denmark, where archaeologists have found evidence of an ancient grog, which used to keep people warm on winter nights, uh, dating to around 1500 to 1300 BC. Uh, this uh, drink actually was comprised of the following. Um, honey, bog, cranberry, uh, ling lingonberry, I always wanted to say that the other way around, uh, bog, myrtle, yarrow, juniper, birch tree resin and cereals including wheat, barley uh, and or rye, and sometimes grape wine imported from southern or central Europe. Now this is an interesting find because it adds obviously to the material culture from uh, essentially the Iron and Bronze Age in, uh, in, in Denmark. But also, uh, as one of the researchers highlights, it, it really challenges the, the concept of uh, a barbarian bunch of people scratching out a living on rocks somewhere north of civilization in um, what was known as, let me just check, as Proxima Thule. So it's, uh, it's, it's a really quite a nice little find and also testament to humanity's unending in Invent, uh, inventiveness in finding new um, ways to produce alcohol. I'm sure Jim Jenna Bones would approve. So that's headline number one. Headline number two actually comes from uh, northern France and uh, the Battle of the Somme. Now, um, the Battle of the Somme was a truly terrible battle, around about a million casualties, unfortunately. Um, but uh, this news actually is linked with uh, the unsealing of a tunnel which has uh, pretty much been sealed for around about a hundred years. Um, what they found inside is essentially graffiti, and as they say, um, uh, the signatures that have been there for nearly a hundred years, because the tunnels have been sealed up, are as fresh as the day they were made, like doodles on a notebook, they say. Um, and this goes some way um, to, I suppose, humanising some of those losses in the Somme. Uh, the Somme was a truly terrible, horrific event uh, for humanity, but certainly in the World War One, in the World War, sorry, in the First World War. <laughs> um, and, uh, and the, 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 these moments, these notes, these, these handwritten uh, poems or, or just messing around highlights actually that these were people who were lost. This wasn't just statistics. Now this is certainly not the first and it won't be the last World War I news story uh, coming along this year and in the next few years. But what I'll try to do for you so you don't get World War I fatigue is um, select the most interesting ones and put them in my top threes in Archeo Scoops. So worry not, it's not all going to be World War One dominated, but I quite liked this story actually. Um, those moments when people wrote on walls have been um, preserved and now uncovered. So that's headline number two. Headline number three is actually uh, quite a nice story from the British Museum, um, highlighting that in 2012 around 990 items and artefacts were uh, classified as treasure. Um, having been recovered by the public, by amateur archaeologists and metal detectorists. Now, um, people often criticise uh, the, the portable antiquities scheme. They say it encourages people to go out digging up um, their gardens, digging up um, uh, treasure in order to sell it to museums. But that's not quite true. This, this trade was already happening. And since 1997, the portable antiquities scheme has been a way of monitoring and um, I suppose legitimising the trade in antiques and making it so that actually everyone can benefit, so that the, so that the, the loss of information, i.e. I, where it was found, what it looks like, um, the cultural significance of the artefact in question isn't lost. It doesn't just become something on someone's shelf somewhere. So this is a wonderful story, um, and actually the public went on, uh, it, it, so it goes on to say, the public reported more than 74,000 other historical items to the Portable Antiquities Scheme, um, uh, which experts say has revolutionised archaeology uh, in the UK. So, um, wonderful. Incidentally, since 1997, almost a million, 900,000 art objects have been reported. So, um, again, another success story for the PAS. That's headline number three. Uh, to headline number three, I'll also add a 3A, because this uh, 3A headline, I think, was quite interesting as well. And that is a million-year-old settlement having been found in Norfolk. Now, um, people will make jokes about being, in, you know, people in Norfolk being a little bit backwards, but um, it turns out that actually Homo erectus was living in Norfolk around about a million years ago. Now, the, the article says that um, it, it's, it's proof of the birthplace of British civilization, which I think is pushing it a little bit too far. After all, we don't want to go down the uh, Eoanthropus dorsoni route, the, uh, the famous 
um, um, uh, forgery with the cricket bats. But, <laughs> nonetheless, this is a very, very good bit of news. It is evidence of Homo, Homo erectus in Britain and does push um, occupation, the broader humanity, uh, or rather the broader occupation of humanity in Britain back to around about a million years ago. So that's, uh, that's superb. Um, well, not so much back, I suppose, but it certainly confirms the presence of Homo erectus, as it were. So that, that's, that's superb news. Uh, so, th so for those headlines and also all the other news stories in the past couple of days, do, as ever, check out the links in the video information. They're there for your delectation and delight. So do take your time and enjoy those. Uh, last week, unfortunately, I couldn't bring you uh, an Archeo scoop, so I was feeling rather under the weather. Uh, so hopefully this week you've got plenty to read about. What am I doing next? Well, uh, this afternoon I'm heading off to the local law courts uh, to follow up with the, uh, the people behind the Inner City Project. You may recall that we made a few videos charting the closure of the Inner City Project uh, and the National Trust's, in my view, mistreatment of that project. And um, the tribunal will end this afternoon. So as soon as it's over, the uh, management involved with that, the people involved, the people who I can't yet name, uh, will be able to talk to you and um, actually talk a little bit about uh, their thoughts, about their, 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 um, their observations through this process, but also as well, I suppose, also take a little bit of time to thank you for your support. You have been so supportive. And actually, the, the videos that we did led to um, me going on Radio 4 to do an interview about the legacy of the Inner City Project, but also actually people like Octavia Hill and how the National Trust is actually betraying them. Unfortunately, um, when the piece was finished, the person who was who was being challenged, as it were, went on to say, well, Octavia Hill was just a, um, you know, she was against feminism, she didn't agree with the votes for women, and just batted it to one side, and he wasn't challenged. That was a shame, actually, because just because she wasn't for the vote for women doesn't mean that she was backward. She had very, very forward-looking um, ideas and perspectives on, uh, I suppose, actually, social intervention. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm going to go and get on with that, and uh, do enjoy those news stories. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.